everyone, welcome to Bride and Bloom Weddings Do It Yourself. Today we're going to design a beautiful wrist corsage on a stretchy pearl bracelet. And this wrist corsage has lots of lavender and um, some Queen Anne's lace, some eucalyptus, and it's finished with some very shiny, beautiful sheer ribbon and lace trailers on the handle. So this is a beautiful addition to any country wedding or western wedding, outdoor wedding. It's just a, a lovely little a wrist corsage for grandma or your mom or anyone really special that you would like to add to your wedding party. As well, the other day we just did this boutonniere for, for your guys and it has the twine on the stems so it gives it a very rustic look uh, with the lavender eucalyptus. Now these uh, pieces are to coordinate with this lovely bride bouquet that is full of lavender, eucalyptus, as well as Queen Anne's lace, which is a really nice addition to match the coordinate with the bride's uh, dress. And on the handle, it has the burlap with lace and the pearl pins. So uh, this is a, a beautiful bride bouquet that we'll do at a, another day in another tutorial, as well as a cascade bouquet, um, if you choose that for your bride. So to get started, we're gonna need a few tools. So you're gonna need a glue gun with uh, glue sticks. As I use you know, high or medium temp. Either of those work quite well. And, and also we're gonna need a pair of scissors and a pair of wire snippers. So we've gone ahead and selected our lavender and a little bit of eucalyptus. And so we're gonna get started right away. These come in, they have different directions and have a various look about them which was really nice because it makes each one unique and it uh, gives a really whimsical look so I'm gonna go ahead and and put those together each sort of facing each other turning those in and then we're gonna tape and we're gonna tape with white design tape um, just because we're gonna be covering it with with an ivory so you can go with ivory or white either either one works and then what we're going to do is place the, the white lavender bit in behind. So we're going to just set that in behind these two so it just sort of peeks through. We'll go ahead and tape that. And then we're going to place a piece of eucalyptus in behind, sort of to the side like that, and one on the other side. starting to look a little bit like that and you know you can place them however you like um, it doesn't really matter it really is personal preference how you like it to look and how it places well with each individual lavender bit so um, then we have two longer pieces I, I've gone ahead and cut one of them because I'll put this little bit of lavender in the front and you can do the same with the other one. Just snip off um, some of those pieces so that you have some shorter pieces in the front and longer pieces throughout the corsage. So we're gonna put one kind of peeking out in behind and one more to the front. Just placing that in like that. And then we're gonna put a couple little lavender bits down here as well and then go ahead and tape that. And then right in front, I'm gonna place a tiny bit of your Queen Anne's lace. So it'll be right in, in the very front of your corsage. So we'll go ahead and tape that down. And then we'll snip off all these extra stems because we don't need them. And then go ahead and tape up your bottom. Now you'll have some pre-cut ribbon and what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. You don't have to but I just like the look of it. It gives it a really finished look. So um, you'll have enough to do your bow. We're going to make two bows and we'll get to that in a minute. But first we're going to wrap, and I've pre-cut this, the sheer ribbon on, on the corsage. 
So we're going to start with a little glue dot on the back. I'm going to go ahead and place that down and then wrap it around all the way around until you get to the top. And then sometimes to make it lie flat, you have to just slightly turn the ribbon, um, especially when you're going up from, from thinner stem to a thicker area. So I, I go ahead and turn that, and then you're going to finish in the back. I put a little glue dot on there, and just go ahead and glue that down. Okay, so there's the beginning of our corsage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pearl um, wristlet and it comes with a glue pad which is really nice so we're going to take off that tape get rid of that and then what I like to do is retie the knot because oftentimes they are too loose and when they're loose what will happen is when when you put it on then then your corsage will fall forward so you don't want that so go ahead and make sure that that ribbon is good and tight so I'll make it, give it a, a double knot there, making sure that that's good and tight in the back, in between the pearls, the ribbon, and then double knot. And that way it'll just sit nice and flush to the wrist. So we want those ribbons uh, to either side where the pearls are. So we're just going to set that down there, placing our ribbons on either side. So the next step is we're going to make a little bow to place the corsage on. So this too is pre-cut. Now what we usually start with is a loop. We leave a little bit of a trailer and then we're going to make a loop with your index finger. And then holding that together we're going to twist. Twisting and then holding it with your index finger and thumb and then make the second loop and we're going ahead and then pinch every time you make a loop you're going to do a twist and then pinch so we're on to the second loop I'm holding that with my fingers there going to make a twist and then pushing that down so that you have the twists in between your index finger and your thumb at all times so we go ahead and continue making three loops Sometimes this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, they come together super quick and easy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch those knots together because we're going to tie it with a little bit of sheer ribbon. So we're going to take that and pushing those little loops together, making sure they're all about even before you tie, and then push the loops in between your index finger and thumb so that you're holding the center of the bow and then I'm going to go ahead and cut that and then tie it in a knot making sure it's good and tight and give it a double knot there and then we're going to trim off this excess we don't need that Now I like to heat seal my ribbon because I don't like fraying after. So if you're going to do that, you'll need a lighter. And what I do is I make sure that I hold the bows away, or the loops rather, and then go ahead and lightly heat seal the edges so that you have no fraying. Be careful not to hold the lighter too long because it will sh a sear uh, or turn your ribbon black. And you don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and find all those edges, heat seal them. Very lightly. Yeah, see so there I've <laughs> I've gotten a little bit black there, so I'm gonna snip that off and redo it. You, it just takes a second of holding it there. And then the last one, make sure you have the loops away so that you don't uh, burn through those. And there we have it. We've made a lovely little bow. Now this bow, what we're going to do is we're gonna place it into the center of the glue pad. Now I like to have a bowl underneath my flowers. I just think it, it's nice to cover all that plastic and it just looks more elegant. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that down, finding the center of the knot. I'm gonna put a glue dot there. 
and we're going to glue that right on to the center of the glue pad, making sure that your trailers um, from the pearl bracelet are on either side because we need those to tie the corsage down. So just press that in, make sure it's glued in really good. And then we're going to take our corsage, binding the back. We've decided we want that in the front, so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on there. And you want the bulk of the weight in the center of that glue pad because you don't want it to be too top heavy um, because it will tip on your wrist. So I'm going to press that down for a second and then grab my little um, ribbons that I put out to the side and then just feed them through those loops that we have and now we're going to tie the corsage down. One thing you want to make sure that you watch for is that it is centered. So turn it around, look at the top, and make sure that your um, corsage is centered and straight up from the glue pad so that it'll, it'll sit straight on the wrist. Okay, so we've given that a double knot. It looks good. And now we're going to go ahead and make the front bow. So the same technique with the smaller sheer ribbon. We're going to leave about four or five inches hanging down because those are going to be trailers. So we're going to make a little loop just over our index finger. Twist it, hold the knot between your index finger and thumb. And again, make a loop holding the knot in the center. So we're going to make three loops, twisting every time. That just makes the bow um, stand out more. There we go, three. So I'm going to hold my center. And what we're going to tie it with is some lace. I've pre-cut a couple of uh, lace pieces here. So we're going to find the center of those, right about there, and tie that around to our bow. Now we're going to push all those loops the other way. We found our center and when you find your center make sure that the loops all line up and they're about all about the same um, size. So we're going to go ahead and tie that. Find the center and we're going to give it a double knot. So we're going to pull all those trailers down, making sure our bow is uniform and even. And we can go ahead and cut them. Now you find your knot in the center here. And these little bits, you can either cut them off or, or leave them as extra trailers. I'm going to cut them off because um, I don't think we need them for this one. Make sure you don't do, go too close to your knot. And now what we're going to do is find our knot, pulling all those loops forward into your hand and turning the trailers into your hand. So what you have is your center knot. We're going to add a little bit of glue and then press it right down whoops, on the knot that uh, we did with securing our corsage. Now we're going to place it right in the center, hold it there for a second. And then I just push down in the center of my bow, making sure it's good and secure. Hold it there for a couple seconds, pressing firmly. And then just sort of squeezing that in there, making sure all those loops kind of come forward so we have a pretty little knot, or a pretty little bow rather. There we go. And now you have all your trailers. Now we're going to even those up a little bit. Like I said, I, I usually like to cut them about four inches. And I'll show you why in a second, just how, and I can heat seal the, the shear a little bit, but you really can't with the lace. They don't, they don't fray either, so it's really not a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to put on my wrist corsage. And you can see when you cut about four inches, it just sits nicely on the hand. It's just the right, the right length. But uh, Having said that, you can do them as long or as short as you want, but I, I think for comfort that's that's kind of nice. 
So there we have it, a beautiful lavender and eucalyptus wrist corsage. Just like I said, a wonderful addition to your country wedding. Great for moms, grandma, or that special auntie, anybody that you would like to share one of these with on your special day. So I want to thank you for watching. And if you are interested in this do-it-yourself package, just click on the link below. So have a wonderful day.